Guys, it is straight up flower farmer Christmas on my kitchen table right now. I'm gonna need some coffee to get through all these boxes. <clears throat> Incidentally, if you like this kind of content, not me making coffee, but flower farming related content, gardening related content, general running a farm business content, like and subscribe. Ring the bell, thumbs up. The cats are really floored. I don't know if you can see her. <laughs> I've had multiple cats on this table since I got these packages in here. I may have inadvertently buried my Leatherman tools, so we're going to use my wine key to open boxes. Because that's really what it's getting used for these days. of these grow lights, um, I think about 10, I think it was 10, um, no, it was 12, because I already have six of them. Um, I use them for my personal use back in Houston. I love these grow lights. They're not like super, like commercial grade, but they work really, really well for the price. So I just went with what I knew and what I've used before to success. I also got a box of green sand to make seed block, uh, to seed, seed, to make soil blocks. Yes, that's what they're called, soil blocks. I'm gonna find a nice big box and I'm just gonna start making a pile. This is a Johnny Seed order, but I, uh, I'm going to give it its own separate video because there's a lot, un there's a lot to unpack in this box. excited if you didn't notice. I just got a copy of Discovering Dahlias, um, which is supposed to be like the be all end all Bible of Dahlia growing. Um, to read on the plane. I'm going to Boston next week to hang out with my niece and nephew. Um, my sister is leaving for Oklahoma for medical officer training in the army and someone's got to stay with the kids while my brother-in-law drive, drives, drives there with her and flies back. Auntie Miranda to the rescue. I did get 10 grow lights. I was wrong, because I'm thinking I need 16, because I have eight shelves. Two grow lights per shelf. Yeah. Four shelves per rack.
also got 250 meat trays. I know that's not their styrofoam and that's not the most sustainable thing, but um, I intend to treat them like durable goods and wash them and reuse them. And the reason I got this particular size is because I can get two sets of micro, I think it, yeah, I can get two sets of micro blocks on here, which, you know, is 40, and Two cases of cafeteria trays. There are the little trays. I think they're technically designated fast food trays. by 10 um, and my shelves are 36 inches long by 14 inches deep so they will fit three on a shelf and these guys will fit comfortably three on a tray so a little finagling. In theory. So, I think you're gonna have to like just kind of finagle them. But there, there you go. and a Johnny seat box. box Johnny's now. As 
I told you in my video about the worms, I broke some of my rolls. I'm still not growing all the things. There were, there were a few flowers that just <laughs> didn't make the cut. Like, I was going to grow carnations, but I did some market research. Um, I think I think carnations time is coming, but I don't think it's I don't think it's quite here yet. Um, I give it another year, and I think carnations are going to be big, especially like the heirloom varietal carnations. Um, that is my that is my trend. That is the way I think they're trending. We'll see. Paper for the furnace. I actually ordered less than I did last time. Which is, you know, good. I don't want to blow all my startup capital on seed. This big hunker. This is a pound of buckwheat seed. Um, I got it as a cover crop. It's going to be the next step in my idea. My, I, I want to utilize cover crops to help build up soil mass and you know, soil health and diversity and microbe and microbial life and what have you. And I think cover crops are a really good way to do that. Um, and buckwheat is great for, it's great forage for honeybees, um, and it grows quickly and you can, it, it reaches maturity pretty quickly as well. So, um, you're talking like 35 to 40 days to bloom. Um, that's pretty quick. So, well, you can terminate it very quickly. It doesn't take a lot of time to come to maturity, which is one of the reasons I went with it. That and bee forage. So a lot of these are herbs and filler. I realized that I hadn't invested as much in filler as I would have liked. So um, I ended up with, or let's, let's, let's amend that, filler and little accent flowers, if you will, the teeny tiny little guys. So I got dill, bouquet dill, because that seems to be everybody's favorite dill. Um, I got Audrey White Gomfrina, which I think is going to be a great, um, great addition. I got a lot of herbs. Um, I got cat, which unfortunately its ger germination isn't the greatest, so I may have to get a second, uh, a second variety of catnip. Um, I also got bergamot, which smells amazing, um, looks it's beautiful, and beautiful it makes a great filler flower I mean from what I've seen it make it makes a great filler flower and I can also use it in the second part of my business which is the value-added products where I'm going to make infusions and use those to make soaps so bergamot if you have a cup of Earl Grey tea that, that's what you're tasting besides the tea obviously that's what makes Earl Grey tea taste like Earl Grey tea I got some more bachelor buttons. I got the classic magic that I was talking about, um, which is this really deep purple um, bachelor button. I also got, I'm going to talk about these guys in a second. I got the black button, which is so classic magic is a mix of darker and purple toned bachelor buttons. Classic black button, uh, bachelor button is like a really deep purple. I also got some verbena, which is another shade. I got two of those. Why did I get two? I think that may have been a mistake. I don't think I ordered two of those. Or if I did, it was, it's somebody's mistake. Mine or theirs. Um, but verbena is another great herb that makes good filler. It's very pretty. 
I got more calendula. Guys, I love calendula. I think calendula is beautiful. It's a great, like, medium accent flower. It's smaller, you know, it's not as like in your face as a zinnia or a dahlia, but it's just, they're, they're very lovely and they smell amazing. And they have, my soap that I use is calendula based and I have high hopes and a lot of ideas for calendula. I got the Audrey Purple Pink Gonfrina. I got Lemon Balm. Again, it's a great filler. It smells lovely. It, it grows like a weed. Um, I got Ageratum because I had not, I forgot to buy it. Borage, which is another, uh, I think it's also called Bee Balm, maybe? I don't. All I know is bees love it. It is beautiful. It, um, it dries lovely. It has a nice smell to it. It's got these pretty little purple flowers. I love borage. Borage, borage. Ow, I got hyssop, anise hyssop, which is, um, it's another herb, it's another, it's kind of a spiky purple flower, kind of like a lavender, but imagine a lavender on steroids. It's, it's like a big beefy, it's a big beefy spike. Um, again, I think they're beautiful. They, um, they make great, it makes, I mean, it's a great herb. It has kind of a, it's kind of a neat, an anise smell to it. It's kind of like, um, licorice, but not, is licorice as licorice is. I got Benary's Giant Zinnias because I failed to buy them last time. I just, I was like, I don't need those. Everyone does those. I, I, I changed my mind. I, I, having looked through all these pictures of Benary's, I just, I decided, you know what? We're, we're gonna go with it. We're gonna try it. We're gonna see how it goes. Um, and last, what, you know, I, think I was able to get it last time because it was out of stock. Um, I also got Zinderella, Zinderella peach zinnias because this is, I talk about the, um, I bought them because they're pretty buys. Zinderella, Zinderella is just, it's, it's beautiful. It's this wonderful apricotty peachy color. It's, um, it's just, it's gorgeous. It's, they grow well because they are kind of amazing. I saw them on the Florette website and I just kind of fell in love. Um, I got a, it's called Maximilian Sunflower. It's a little itty bitty. It looks almost like a uh, Rubecchia. I cannot think of what they're called. Tri Triloba. Rubecchia Triloba. They didn't have any Rubecchia triloba in stock, so I, I'm gonna get these guys and go. They're perennial, um, which means they're going to kind of they're gonna come back every year. And I, they were so little, and I thought they would make a really good, um, but they make a really good addition to the perennial area of my garden. I got. Crespedia, sunballs, drumstick, flowers. Um, I got them because they're adorable. They look, they do look like little balls of sunshine on a stick. How do you, how, how do you say no? How do you say no to that? Seriously, it looks like a Dr. Gomfrina, and these guys look like Dr. Seuss um, drawings in real life. I. I like they look like tough, like how I picture tuffle trees would look. Um, that, that's what these guys look like to me. I, I just, the, these and the gomphrena and the, um, all of the amaranth look like Dr. Seuss creations. I just, I, I kept seeing them in a bouquet and I'm like, these look amazing. I, I have to have them. I 
got the dill, white dill ummy, um, ummy magis because I, again, needed more filler. All I had was the Dara false Queen's Anne lace that comes in the pastel colors. And I realized having a white um, dill would be a good addition to bouquets. I know all these things. It's gonna make seed ordering is hard, guys. It's really challenging because you're like, all the things, how do I streamline this? And then you realize after the fact, okay, you know, you're like, I've done such a great job. I've got holes. So go, go for it, go, go figure. And then I got just straight up plain blue bachelor buttons because we get these little, they look like bachelor buttons. Um, they're like chicory though. They look like a little cornflower. I love them. Um, they're a wildfly that grows here and these kind of remind me of them. So I'm like, I have to have these too. I have a mix, but it's, I think it's nice to have um, some solids. And last but not least, yeah, they're growing everywhere. All right. Most of these guys, okay, so the herbs kind of just, they fall into this con concept that I have of, you know, using herbs heavily as filler. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna kick myself about this too much, all these herbs. What I am gonna, what I am gonna give myself a hard time about though, okay, apparently I have way, I have more. Jeez Louise. Okay, I have more herbs. Amelia, or Daphne is really grumpy. She, it's, she is, she is the quintessential cranky old lady. I got more bee balm. I got a Rubeckia that I didn't want to order by mistake. Because, um, I thought it, I saw it was really cute. It says it's an excellent cut flower, but then like the website tells me that it doesn't grow very tall. We'll see. We might use it in some mini bouquet design work type stuff. They're really pretty. They have really pretty colors. So I'm hoping they work out. Now, okay. And then I got a really cool big leaf sage flower because again, I needed more foliage. I like herbs. Herbs make good foliage, especially if they're hardy. Those are all herbs. These are all zinnias. Two zinnias, I got two more zinnias. And then, this is the one I'm gonna kick myself about. I got my last order and I realized I had no Cosmos to speak of. First, I was like, you know, I, I can do without them. I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll make do. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And, and then, then I started looking at all the pictures of the cosmos, and um, all of the pretty different varietals and all the double clicks and so many double clicks. So I, I broke down and I bought. I broke down and I bought four different varietals of Cosmos. Um, so I got the double click mix, which they recommend for newbie flower farmers. Um, I got the double click snow puff because I literally do not have very much in the way of white flowers. I realized this. And sometimes you need a little bit of negative space to break up all the fam in your face flowers. You need some softer, softer flowers to need some variety. I got the sensational mix and I got, I thought I had more than this. I'm pretty sure I have more than this. I remember, I have more than this. I have the double click cranberry, which I got for a really silly reason. Um, 
but maybe not so silly. It is, there is a university here in my town and its colors are burgundy and goldenrod. Like straight up, it's like this really deep burgundy and this really deep gold. They are basically the same color as a pro cut orange sunflower on these double click cranberry cosmos. So I was like, I'm gonna make CMU, CMU, Central Michigan University themed bouquets to sell because we have so many people here that either go to college or are employed by the university. So why not? It might be, it's a cool color combination though. So I'm like, it'll work. Um, I couldn't say no to the double click cranberry for this reason alone. Um, I remember the Rubenzia being a really deep moody color as well. I may be wrong about that. And then the sensational mix, I remember them being a little bit of a, I'm, I'm not sure what these look like, I have to be perfectly honest. I'm gonna have to look them up when I get done. But yeah, uh, so yeah, I, I got, I got five different varieties. So not only did I break my please stay underneath four varietals rule on these guys, I just went out and bought them. Just like I was like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna add this to our we're gonna have to reconfigure all of our row plans and just add cosmos. But I don't regret it. We'll see if I regret it in the fall. I got the fall in the spring when I'm planting this mini cosmos. I also made a purchase that's not going to be here for a few more weeks. Um, I got some dahlias, um, and I only, I only bought 20 clusters. Um, I, I thought that I was buying 20 tubers, and it turns out I was buying 20 clusters. So each of them is going to have two to three tubers on it. They're small clusters. going to try our hand at growing dahlias, which I mentioned in the bonus video. And, um, when they get here, I'm going to put them in pots so they have a chance to like sprout before I put them in the ground because our soil, by the time April rolls around, our soil still isn't warm enough for a dahlia to be happy. So we're going to keep them in the uh, germination chamber and then under lights in the garage until I start seeing some su substantial growth. But I'm very excited about those. I'm hoping they work out. I'm very excited about all of this. I'm, I'm are getting very real. I know I said that I would be saying that a lot, but it's unironically, it's true. It's I'm sitting here and, and I'm building a germination chamber before I leave for Boston. And uh, when I get back, I start my frost hardy annuals like in a real way, a very real way. So uh, we're, we're kicking off. I don't even have things tilled up. Well, I'm not tilling, but I don't even have like beds built yet. <laughs> but we're starting flowers. Right now the ground is frozen. There's nowhere to build bed yet. Um, but I mean, this, this is getting, it, it's here guys. It's, it's gonna happen. And that is kind of overwhelming and exciting. So stick around, take care of yourselves. Stay tuned and watch how this garden grows. We hope it grows. We want it to grow. Please grow. Please grow. God, now I'm having flashbacks to Seymour and Little Shop of Horrors begging Audrey to to grow for him. I, I hope I don't have to open veins. Maybe I should have bought more than just two.